In this video, I'm gonna show you what filtering is and how to do it inside FL Studio. What's up my producer friends? I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. If you're brand new to the channel, I do do a lot of FL Studio and production related tutorials. So be sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel if you like this video. If you don't know, filtering is the process of cutting out certain frequencies. So we could do this within an entire mix. You could do it with an individual instrument or synth. You could do it on a vocal. We could automate it as a cool effect to make your track more interesting. It's actually a really common way that I do this all the time. And the best way to do this inside FL Studio is actually with Destructor, which is a stock FL Studio plugin. This plugin actually just came out pretty recently. It came out with the release of FL Studio 20.6. So as long as you're updated to at least 20.6 of FL Studio, you'll have access to this plugin. This plugin is great because it has four different effects built into it. And one of the effects is actually this filter that I'm talking about. So I did do a tutorial video on this entire plugin, which I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video and something that'll pop up on the screen now as well. If you guys wanna check that out, it's just kind of a walkthrough tutorial of everything this plugin does. But what I wanna talk about in today's video is the filter here. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what filters are, it's a very common tool, especially within sound design, and you're gonna find filters in pretty much any synthesizer that you come across, and it's gonna be a pretty important effect to utilize. And most filters are gonna look pretty much like this one, where it's gonna have a cutoff knob and then a resonance knob. And so our cutoff knob controls the cutoff of the frequencies, which is determined by the type of filter that you have. So for example, on our low pass filter, the lower we go with our cutoff down here, the more high frequencies are getting cut out, or the more low frequencies are actually passing through hence why it's called a low pass. In a second, I'm gonna show you how I actually utilize this in a project that I've been working on. So within this particular plugin, we actually have a pretty nice selection of filter types to choose from. These are all the standard ones that you're gonna see in high quality synths. Uh, so we have our low pass, we have a bunch of different types of slopes. That's what these numbers mean. So our low pass six is gonna be the least steep slope. A low pass 12 is gonna be sort of a medium steep slope and then a low pass 24 is gonna be super steep slope. The same thing goes for a high pass. The high pass is allowing high frequencies to pass through the filter instead of low frequencies. So it's cutting out all the low frequencies. Our notch filter is going to be, you're basically cutting out a notch in. So it's, it's cutting out all the frequencies within this notch. And then you're maintaining the low frequencies and the high frequencies on either side of that notch. We also have some alternative slopes on here as well for the low and the high pass, band pass, that sort of thing. Uh, oh, well then we have a band pass too. So the band pass is going to be the opposite of the notch filter where you're actually cutting out the low frequencies and the high frequencies. And then you're, there's a band that's allowing frequencies to pass through. We have our comb filter, which is, as the name suggests, it, you can think of it as like an actual, it looks like a comb. And then we have a couple more filter types down here. I don't wanna get too bogged down on all the different types of filters. The ones I went over are the main ones that you're gonna be using like 95% of the time anyway. And then the last knob that I haven't talked about yet is the resonance knob, which is gonna create a resonant frequency right above the end of where the, the cutoff is happening. So that's how this filter works. It's how pretty much all filters work. Let's go ahead and dive into this project and I'll show you some actual uses, how I like to use this plugin. So this particular destructor that I'm actually showing you right now is on this vocal sample in this track here. I'll just go ahead and play this, let you kind of hear it. So this particular vocal sample that you hear right here is what we're focused on now. Let me go ahead and mute the destructor and we'll kind of take a listen. So I do have some other processing going on here. Here, let me actually just mute everything. We'll take a listen. So it just gives you an example of what the original vocal sample sounded like. Now I have a lot of other processing going on. I have a pretty heavy format shift, which is making this sound like it's, it's up an octave in pitch. Uh, and then I also have an EQ on it. Um, EQs are another way to, you know, filter out frequencies. So what I'm doing in this EQ is actually a high pass filter. And then I have, you know, a couple delays on here. I have a little bit of reverb. And then of course we have the destructor. So all those things combined really make this vocal have a, have a nice vibe to fit with, with what I'm doing here with this track. 
so I really love experimenting with filters on vocals, uh, especially if it's going to be sort of like a one shot vocal, kind of like how I'm using in this track and something that I want sort of more in the background. So another really great use of a filter would be to create uh, an automation clip on within the cutoff. So I can add a destructor on, I'm going to add it onto my piano just to kind of show you and illustrate what I'm talking about here but this works especially well with synths and stuff that has a lot of higher frequency information that you wanna filter in and create kind of like a swelling effect. Um, I'm gonna bring the resonance down here a little bit and just bring the cutoff down. Let's take a listen. So what we can do is we can kind of bring this down a little bit and then I can create an automation clip and I can kind of have this swell up and that'll increase the energy as the filter, you know, comes up and you hear more and more frequencies. And just to kind of take this a step further, so I already have a destructor here, which I probably did this at some point with the respace, but I'm gonna do another one just to illustrate this. So I'm gonna mute all this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and create an automation clip on the cutoff and I'm gonna do kind of this. So hopefully you can kind of hear that, that a little bit better. Some instruments work better than others when it comes to filtering it out and kind of doing this effect. Like I said, the best instrument is usually like a synth, like a really nice like super saw with a lot of high frequency content. And then you can just filter that out and make it sound real nice. Anyway, I'd really recommend that if you're new to this concept of filtering that you start experimenting with it. If you want to learn even more about sound design, I did do a introduction to synthesis and sound design series. Really, it's just just two videos, but the first video is the one that you really need to watch to get an understanding of the fundamentals of sound design and synthesis. And so I'll be sure to put that video on the screen now. You'll see it somewhere on the screen here. So click if you want to check out that video. Also, if you have any production questions, I am doing live Q and A's inside my Discord server, and that's gonna be every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So I'll be sure to leave a link in the description for that as well.